Hi guys, welcome to another video of mine on this really cool DIY channel video Epo where we get to make something and we have fun. Thank you subscribers for supporting and sharing my videos. If you are watching this video and not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. It will take a couple of seconds. In this video, we will be making a terrarium. For those who don't know what a terrarium is, it's a sealed transparent globe or a similar container in which plants are grown. In order to do this, we will be using a light bulb. Sounds interesting, right? So let's do it. The best part of making a terrarium is the materials can be obtained for free from your backyard. And what you really need would then be a little bit of patience. I have some blown out light bulbs which I had collected earlier and can be used for this project. For those who are only familiar with CFL and LED bulbs, a bulb no longer works if it is fused or blown up. A blown up bulb can be identified if the filament inside is not connected or hanging loose. This is a good one and here is a blown out one. For the contents inside the terrarium, I started by collecting tiny stones which would be the base of the terrarium and act as a drain. While I was doing so, I spotted really small snails just the size of my fingernails and was really careful not to pick them up. I also collected some mud from a nearby tree which had a collection of dead and decaying leaves and also sand particles. Dry twigs could be good both aesthetically and add to the ecosystem of the terrarium. Tree barks add nice texture and contain nutrients for the vegetation to grow. A scoop of sand from my yard and some fertile soil from the top layer made way into my collection. Overall, I had collected some gravel, sand, mud, dead seeds, leaves and twigs. Now it was time to look for the vegetation. I collected some moss which I found near water pipes and under leaking water tanks. They tend to grow where they find shade and adequate moisture. They look beautiful already. Let's not get distracted here and continue with our terrarium and this video too. I also collected some kind of mushrooms, wild plants and some tiny grass varieties. While I was digging and looking for these things, I found a strange thing that looked like a man-made tune. Can someone please tell what it is or could have been? Now let's get back into the workshop and make the terrarium itself. The bulb needs to be emptied from its contents but before that, hand and eye protection is a must. The drill was of less use because the bulb was sealed with a glass-like material too. A set of nose pliers did the job fine. At this point, it is good to clean and dispose these broken glass pieces safely. You need to be gentle and delicate at every stage or the bulb could break and the whole process starts again. Once done, the inside of the bulb was cleaned with a piece of tissue rolled on a barbecue skew. To fill the contents in the bulb, a small funnel should be apt or a small paper can be rolled to suit the purpose. I don't have tweezers, so I made one with popsicle sticks and rubber band. Before you start, remember that a terrarium is a micro ecosystem. You need to imitate what you find in nature. Therefore, the bottom layer would be tiny rocks or gravel. You can add some charcoal here too. These act as a drain and a tiny water reservoir where water gets collected. On top of that, a layer of sand is added. I went a little overboard but you don't need as much. Next would be some fertile soil suitable for the plant growth. The soil is being leveled as per the choice on how I need to arrange it. Using a barbecue skew, the vegetation was placed. The moss followed by some mushrooms, twigs, barks and some tiny plants inside the terrarium. Once I was happy with what I was seeing, it was time to add a few drops of water to keep the whole environment moist. Do not overwater. To seal the bulb, the end of a brush was apt. It was cut to make a cork sort of a thing for the bulb. It's a must to be gentle and not press too hard at all times. It was then hot glued and sealed firmly. There would be a hole on the holder once the holder clip is removed. It was drilled and a clip made out of a cycle spokes was inserted. To make the stand for the terrarium, the handy coat hanger finds another use. It was bent into a U shape and at one of its end, a hook was made to hang the bulb. For the base, a 2 inch by 2 inch wood piece was used. A large bark was hot glued. Although the hot glue was not so sticky, it served as a grip. The bark was nailed to the wood piece later. The excess of the bark was cut using a cutter and resulting in this unfinished wooden log look. A hole was drilled for the coat hanger stand and it was snugly fit and a dab of super glue was added for the added strength. I wanted to stop here but I thought of covering the aluminium stand to match the theme. So I rolled it with a thin jute rope. This brings an end to our terrarium project. The 
leftover plants were planted in another container which could be used later. I really enjoyed working on this project. Hope you like it too. I have many other videos on my channel which might interest you. Please comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back with another video very soon. As always, thanks for watching.